Have you ever wondered why the wealth gap in almost all the economies are not just large, but growing? My name is Dr. Alan Barnard. I am CEO of Goldot Research Labs and have always been very curious about what the real cause is of wicked problems, problems that have been around for a long time. And then to see if I can develop very simple, elegant, not just explanations of these problems, but also possible solutions. Well, I got interested in this topic almost three decades ago when I discovered a very interesting kind of mathematical quirk. I was asked to investigate a business who was declining over time and they were pretty convinced that, you know, during a good year they make about 20% more, during a bad year they might lose 20% and shouldn't these just balance out? And I remember taking out my calculator and going 100 plus 20% is 120 minus 20% is 96. And I went, oh boy, what happened? And I realized that this is one of these mathematical quirks. And it got me to think about, well, where does that four go to? So if there's two people trading, clearly the other side must win. But if the same is true for them, what decides whether the one will end up winning more than the other? And that was really interesting to me. Um, fast forward about 15 years or so after that, I read a book, a really important book by Nassim Taleb called Anti-Fragile. And I was very curious. We had uh, worked with Fortune 500 companies to build simulation models to help them improve their operational financial supply chain performance, project performance, mining performance. And he had in the book introduced these these three types of classifications of organizations. Uh, a fragile system is one that's harmed by volatility because they suffer more from, from losses than equivalent gains. You then have robust systems that don't really care. They uh, suffer equally from a loss than what they benefit from an equivalent gain. And then you have these anti-fragile systems that are ones that benefit more from gains than uh, what they uh, lose from, from equivalent losses. And this was very interesting because we could build systems and try different strategies to say how could we transform a company or organization or even, even a complete country from one that is fragile, that's hurt much more by a bad year than what they benefit from the equivalent good year, to one that's not only robust but anti-fragile. And I tried building a robust system. I thought, okay, it should be pretty simple. You have a company, the company starts off with 100 in sales, they have a good year, they make 20% more than last year, they have a bad year, they lose 20% mm -hmm. over last year. And of course, the same thing happened, 120, 96. And I realized, oh boy, I'm back to that. And the first thing I was interested in is, can you come up with a simple formula to quantify how much gain you must get in order to compensate for the loss. And kind of it was shockingly simple. It's essentially the, the break-even gain is equal to your loss divided by 100 minus the loss percentage. So if you could lose 5% in a transaction, you'd have to gain 5% over 1 minus 5%. So basically 5.2% odd in order to make up for that gain. But if you could lose 50%, you'd have to make up, you'd have to be able to gain 100% just to get back to break even. And this was to me fascinating. And it immediately got me thinking, well, okay, so what would happen if you have a, a group of people that are all trading with each other and they have an equal probability of winning or losing every trade, but Every time they win, they win 20%. Every time they lose, they lose 20%. What would happen over time? And it was just something that I didn't have much intuition about. Your intuition sort of screams that surely it should balance out over time if you run this, this sort of uh, simulation long enough. But of course it doesn't. And this is what this wealth gap simulation does. It, imagine you've got 100 people, each of them starting with $100. So that's $10,000 worth of net wealth that's in the system. And they trade with, with different people over the next 100 days. And each of them, when they trade, they have a 50-50% chance of winning or losing. Uh, what will happen? And if the outcome is not good, how can it be changed? With a few simple rules. Um, so this is the setup page. And by the way, this model is available for, for download or playing uh, in the cloud. Uh, if you are interested, you're welcome to email me at alan at gold at research labs, and I'll make sure that you get access to your copy. So this is where you can change your settings, the number of traders. You can enforce whether uh, over the 100 days, they must 
trade exactly with different people every day or it just randomly decides whoever is available next they can trade with them uh, the days of trading you can change uh, currently it's set at 100 days you can set the gains versus the losses of every trade and then you can also set whether you want this to be a zero-sum game which means that the total net wealth will never go more than the 100 times by the hundred dollars or whether you allow a non-zero-sum game, either that net wealth to grow over time or to, to shrink over time. And there's a little example here that explains how this, how this works. So let's click the play button and see what happens. And initially it starts off, some goes up, some goes down, but then you start noticing that some of these bars, and, and the bars basically are representing the wealth of people that are trading. You can see how some of them are already way below the hundred dollars that they started and some are really high so let's go and have a look at the results um, let's just zoom out you can see this one it's just incredibly has become incredibly wealthy in fact they are worth now three thousand eight hundred dollars that's the richest trader it happens to be a woman in this case the poorest trader is now worth four cents so in just a hundred days with exactly the same starting conditions they all started with a hundred dollars that equal probabilities of winning or losing, there's now an 85,000 time gap between the poorest and the richest. Uh, as I was working on a simulation, I found out that there's actually in economics that there are people that have been working on this kind of thing. I was completely unaware of it. And there's this thing called a Gini coefficient that you can calculate. Uh, so we've built that into the simulation. The closer it is to one, the more unequal the distribution of wealth. The closer it is to zero, the more equal it is. You can see we, we ran the simulation with a, a non-zero sum game. So the total wealth at the end is $13,800. So there's been a growth in wealth, uh, maybe through productivity, et cetera, of $3,800. Uh, but what's interesting is to then look at the spread, right? So the, there's one in this hundredth percentile, uh, there's two in the sort of sixtieth percentile, but the majority, 93 of them are in this bottom 10%. And, and why that is, if we go to look at the actual trading results, we can sort it by whoever is worth the most money now. So this trader number three uh, started with $100, she's now worth $3,792. That's a very large growth in her wealth. And the reason why is that she was just lucky, even though the odds are 50-50, over the 100 days, she was just lucky to win 64% of the trades. And when you look at the bottom, um, you find out that the unluckiest ones ended up losing 64% of the trades. And that's basically have wiped out completely their, their final wealth. Um, so... The other thing that's very interesting is even the ones that got 50-50, you'd think they should be okay, right? But look at this number 19 year, 50-50% odds, started with $100 down to $13. So clearly this is not a great outcome. So what can you do? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, the one I've tested, and I'd love to hear if there's any further suggestions around that, is to say what would happen if we would simply used a wealth tax? So every time there's a transaction the winner gets taxed 20 percent of the gain that they've made and that gain is then reinvested back to protect the poorest of the poor and in this case we want to protect the bottom 20 percent of the people from becoming ultra ultra poor so we're sort of trying to cap the losses that they have without capping the gains that somebody could have on the outside. So you can adjust this 20%. You can adjust how much of that 20% is reinvested back. The rest might stay with the government. Um, and then what percentage of the poorest do you want to support? So let's see what that looks like. And you can see um, it looks already like it's a little bit more equal. The gap isn't growing so much between the, the poorest and the richest. So we're already at a... Um, it looks like the poorest is not going below $50, which is really good. Um, so it's protecting them from becoming ultra poor. Um, and that's good. The rich still a lot more wealthy than what they started off with. So they were able in just 100 days to increase their net wealth by uh, 14 times, which is which is great. So it's rewarding those people that are careful and making good decisions and taking calculated risks without being reckless. Um, but it's a much more equal distribution of wealth now. You still have 
you know, one person that owns a, a, a lot, but not so much more than the rest. And you can see the Gini coefficient is, is substantially below the, the, the 0.5 here. So that's just a quick summary. I would love to get your feedback on this model. Um, if you've learned anything about an alternative reason why the wealth gap is not just large, but growing over time, you can imagine what happens if we play this game for 200 days, it will just increase if we don't have this protection mechanisms in place. And and secondly, if you're a student or, or a lecturer in economics um, and you have some alternative strategies that you would like to, to try out, please uh, email me at alan at Golden Research Labs and we'll see how we can incorporate those and, and give you an opportunity to experience the result. Thank you for your time.